There once was an artist, a girl who lived in her own fantasy world, rarely ever stepping out of her studio, for her studio was her escapism from the outside world. One day, today rather, she awoke with an inkling for adventure and decided to venture out into the world to explore the beauty around. She found a hidden gem in an otherwise mundane town, an oasis hidden in plain sight, and through the vine woven gates she entered into a secret garden. And here our journey begins. Welcome back everyone. Today I decided to leave my studio, get out, and go on a little artist date. I love going out, but sometimes I have to force myself to break from routine and get out of my bubble. I recently have found a love for being in nature. I used to deem myself more of a city girl, but recently the stillness and quiet of nature makes me feel reconnected and inspired. I was looking for local gardens when I stumbled across the Van Vleck grounds. Driving through the gates, it felt like a discovery of a hidden gem in plain sight on a plain old suburban street. It was so magical, I felt like I was being transported into another world. The Van Black home and gardens originated in 1868, when a man named Joseph Van Black Sr. moved his family to Montclair to get away from the hustle and bustle of New York City. This oasis was created by three generations. His son Van Black Jr. had a passion for the arts and horticulture, and helped develop the gardens to what they are today. The gardens have a strong representation of ericaceous plants, with rhododendrons and azaleas being his favorites. In 1993, the family gifted the grounds to the Montclair Foundation, and now the public can enjoy the beautiful space for free. I was yearning to get back to the studio. I felt the inspiration bubbling within me while walking through the gardens. I took a lot of reference photos and began to sketch down some ideas. I have been in the process of developing a series and the gardens added so much fuel to that inspiration. It is rare that you get that cliche moment of inspiration, but when it happens it feels so good to let the creative juices flow. Before I can get into sketching, I need to sharpen my pencils. I've been sharpening my pencils like this for a while. When I was younger, I would reject it and not see the point, as it takes a lot of time to use an exacto knife to sharpen graphite. I realize that this way it gives me so much more control over the lines that I want to create and the range of motion I have significantly increases. I feel like I'm wielding a mini sword. I begin my sketching process by working with thumbnails. I call this sketchbook my junk book because it allows me to let go and let my ideas flow without the worry of being neat or too refined. This book isn't about successful drawings, it's about letting the ideas out. Once I feel like my ideas are out, I start to refine them and to organize those thoughts. Collaging with a mix of sketching helps me create an atmosphere that I want to demonstrate to the viewer. I gather images and ideas from different sources and piece them together like a puzzle, seeing where certain ideas fit together. From there, I put them in a different sketchbook. This one a bit more refined than my junk book, and also one that I feel more comfortable sharing with people. After working for a bit, I decided to take a break and switch gears. Some time ago, I had finally made an artist site with my portfolio and a shop for my work. I got a few orders, so I needed to pack and ship them out. I'm really grateful for anyone that supports me and my artwork, 
so I always like to include a handwritten note and a little surprise for the customer. I find that it adds a little warmth and personalization to each order. Today I decided to add a few extra stickers that I've been working on and have yet to put on my shop. I begin blocking in color. The pencil sketch I already completed off camera to give me some guidelines as I work. At this moment, my focus is in blocking in the shapes of color. This is my under layer. In watercolor, it's a little bit different than, let's say, oil painting. I keep it light and airy since the medium calls for that. The transparency of watercolor is the beauty of the medium, so I try to appease that. feeling lost in the painting, so I grab a piece of tracing paper to play around a bit and see what I can change and manipulate. At this point, I feel like I didn't plan out my idea thoroughly. I start playing with the movement of the hair. I want it to flow upwards so that I, so I play with different variations. As the painting process went further, I started to get more and more frustrated. I felt in the body of the girl and I felt I was struggling with the paper so much. I grabbed a rough grain texture for this piece when I usually stick to a cold press and it felt like the paper was working against me rather than with me. The frustration only seemed to grow further. I decided to step away from the girl and to work on the background to give my eye a break from her. As I went further into the background, I decided that I needed to start this piece over and use a different paper to rework some of the issues that I was struggling with. Before doing that, I tried to adjust the piece with other mediums, I tried oil pastels, but ultimately I decided that starting over was the best option. Take two. I went back to the drawing board in a way for this version. I switched back to the cold press paper and I increased the size of the painting since I was struggling with how little detail I could fit in the previous version. I personally always prefer working larger and tend to struggle a little bit with smaller works. And once again, I begin to block in the color to give a wash. I give more detail to the gibsibo trying to highlight the beautiful pillars that hold the structure together. I find that this size in the cold pressed paper is a much better choice than the one previous. This version already feels less like a struggle and I find myself slowing down and enjoying the process more. Once I slow down and enjoy the process, it seems that things start to flow into place. Starting over sometimes is the best way to go than overthinking a piece that isn't working. It gives a new perspective to the project and allows you to see mistakes with a fresh pair of eyes. The past experience has also allowed me to give broader, more confident strokes as I have already had the muscle memory from doing it in the previous version. Often, it takes me a few times to redo and rework a piece until it's up to par with my standards. I have to remind myself constantly that starting over and grabbing a new piece of paper is not a failure, but just part of the journey. We are all human, we make mistakes, and how we take those mistakes is how it shapes our journey. I mention this often in my videos because I struggle with starting over. I often get a sense of failure that I didn't complete something in the first try. But I have to remind myself constantly that every new page is a new beginning and the old piece is not a failure but just a stepping stone towards improvement and development.